Today we are going to reinvent the guitar body template. But first, I want to show you something. This right here is a zebra wood and wenge super guitar pick holder. No, it's not. But I do want to talk to you about something. This is one of the awesome things about being a woodworker. And building guitars is no better way to increase your proficiency as a woodworker. Because the attention to detail that is required to build a great instrument will only make your other woodworking skills better. I want to show you a watch holder. This is pretty interesting. My daughter came to me a month or so ago and said, Dad, I want you to help me to build a watch case for my boyfriend. And so I said, sure. So we shopped around for wood and we spent basically the better part of two weekends uh, working together to build this case. We got, um, like I said, the zebra wood with some wenge spline joints. We've got embedded hardware right here that just kind of is nice and concealed. We've got one tray that lifts out and then has an open area below it for random storage of items. The trays are wenge with a little zebra wood as, as the little grid there for storing watches. So why was this important to take the time to show you a watch box on a guitar building channel? The thing is, it helps illustrate what's really most important. I got to spend a couple days with my daughter building this box together. She did pretty much all the finishing by herself. She did a lot of the sanding because certainly I didn't want to do that. But woodworking in general or instrument building can bring families together and allow them to spend quality time. The less time you're in front of the TV or in front of YouTube and the more time you're in the shop working on things, building things, spending time with family members, building things for them or for who they want to build things for, this is the greatest thing about woodworking. So reinventing the body template. That's kind of a bold claim and honestly uh, what I've been doing is trying to solve a problem and I've been solving that problem by taking ideas that I've seen bits and pieces and combining it to what I do. One of the biggest challenges of my students in the class that I teach is routing out the bodies. All right and what I've done is I'm trying to figure out a way to make it a little bit less intimidating and more chances for success. Okay, that is what I'm always striving for. So I've been using acrylic templates for a long time and I really like acrylic templates. I like that you can see through them. I like that the uh, double stick tape when needed uh, adheres very well and very securely to it. I like a lot of things about it. The problem is, is I never really had a foolproof way of alignment. I would generally use um, holes either in what will be removed, like the neck pocket area or any of the, the pickup cavity areas, and I would use holes in those, but the problem is, is once the holes are routed out, how do you ensure the alignment? We can draw a center line on the body, okay, but getting a visual appearance of that center line is a little bit tricky to be dead perfect. So what I decided to do was a couple things. First thing, I re-engineered the templates. I moved the alignment pins from eighth inch that I was using in these pockets to quarter inch size and I moved them off of the guitar body. And basically what I've decided is I'm gonna make my alignment pin uh, holes in the same area where the strap buttons would be fastened. All right, so that is typically an area I can select 
and be consistent with in all of my designs. And um, certainly, uh, it allows me interchangeability between templates without worrying about the order of operations as far as if I was holding it down with the neck pocket areas, the neck cavities, you know, will those be there or not be there? Um, and that's the biggest dilemma here. So I've moved those off. Now the other thing I've done is I've used a threaded insert. Now I've used those before for eighth inch, but I could never use those uh, in the past for quarter inch holes because I could never find any drilling bushings that were designed to drill a quarter inch hole, but yet were no taller than a quarter inch high so that they would be flush on the template. Now, I say a quarter inch high, but as I started sampling all the so-called quarter inch acrylic that I had in inventory, I found that some of the stuff that I had purchased, probably at Home Depot or something like that, uh, was actually only 0 0.20 or 0.22 uh, inches high. And so therefore, even if I found a quarter inch drilling bush in that was 0.25 quarter inches tall, it would still be too tall and it would stick out. And then therefore that template would only be a one-sided template. Um, and that was an issue. So I decided to uh, have some custom fabricated for myself. Now, unfortunately, in order to get a price point that actually made sense, based upon the current value of drilling bushings out there on the market, um, I had to order a lot of them, thousands. Okay, so anyway, I've got more than enough for a lifetime of me. In fact, uh, when I finally get my Amazon storefront up and running, I may offer these for sale uh, because I've got more than I could ever use. And so that could help other people if they're looking to do the same thing. Okay, the first thing I did is took a center finding ruler and I found the center of my guitar body blank and I marked that and then took a straight edge and drew that line. Now we bring you in for a close-up. So you'll see that center line and those are my quarter inch drill bushings. They basically just press right into the acrylic. I use a little bit of heat from a soldering iron. They just melt like right in. The acrylic rehardens around them and they are perfectly stable for drilling your templates, you know, hundreds of times maybe more, it'll be perfectly fine. But now we've got that set up on there, ready to drill those holes. It doesn't matter if my alignment is dead perfect or not, because once I drill these holes, these alignment pins become my alignment points. So it really doesn't matter at this point. If you're working with a two-piece uh, glue up body, you're going to want it to go right down the seam. That's going to look the best. So that's the only critical thing. This happens to be a three piece. So if I was off one side or the other a little bit, it wouldn't matter. And once my holes are drilled and pins inserted, center line is going to be center line. Set my depth stop. Now we're going to drill all the way through. It's important that your drill press is perpendicular. Let it pull the chips out. All right, we took that hole all the way through. Now, you can go ahead and drill the second one. What I like to do first is take a pin and insert it in and pound that all the way down we'll flush cut it. People think I never use my Thor hammer that is just on the wall for decorations. By getting one anchored in there prevents anything from shifting. And now we can go and drill the second one, being very assured that it's going to be right where it needs to be. And there's our second alignment pin. All right, now we can drive that second pin all the way in. And just go ahead and flush cut these.
Now, as you can see, with that anchored in, I'm going to have a very stable platform. I'm going to trace out my template because I'm going to pull the template off before I take it to the bandsaw and cut it. That way I do not risk damaging the template. And that's what I ask my students to do too in class is once you trace it, take the template off uh, and that's a lot better. If you're going to overshoot and cross your line, maybe you can shift this alignment point later. All right, so now we've got that drawn on and we're using that, that template there. All right, here's the real advantage of this. I'm just going to take this template off, get that glue to pop off and ease this template off of the pin. Now when it's time to go on to a next procedure, for instance, like the neck pocket, that pushes on the exact same alignment point. I still have dead center and I can route this pocket out right now if I want to, even before I finish cutting out that shape, which is a huge advantage to have that flexibility. The way that I design my templates is I share templates. So this is mainly the neck pocket template, but I also do the electronics and switch cavities. And that way my overall body template doesn't have too many holes cut out to it that kind of weakens it structurally. I kind of share the load, but because of the alignment pins, it's lining up at the exact same spot every single time. When the time comes to do any back routing, like if I had a strat with a tremolo cover, um, with a tremolo spring route on the backside, uh, or whatever else I would need, if it was a rear uh, electronics cavity that I needed to route on the backside. There is absolutely no guesswork to what center. All I've got to do is flip this over pound those pins all the way through and now when I press this template onto those pins I have the exact alignment that I need in this case for my belly cut or for whatever else that I wanted to do on the rear side of the guitar. The pins transfer all the way through. If I'm doing a string through design and I need to install furls on the back, guess what? I've got eighth inch holes on both sides of this template that I can use to start the perfect alignment that I need for those. Now let's go back to the front template. I'll flip this over again, get those pins all the way through, and take my front template and put it back on there. Let's say at this point that I've already cut out my body uh, as close as I could to the template line. All right, and I try to get it within two millimeters. I think that's the best case scenario. The next step is another step that has always intimidated many of my students. And that is taking this entire body to the router table with a big 7 8 solid carbide um, spiral bit that is used to cut this out. It's a big bit, it takes a lot of meat, and it is intimidating. You have got to hold on to this, to this uh, body blank like your life depended on it, especially as you round the corners and end up going around end grain. Those are the times if you are not holding it down su sufficiently, if you are not maintaining contact with the router bit bearing sufficiently, all right, you can risk that router bit grabbing the wood and either causing some severe tear out or actually launching that guitar body right out of your hands, which obviously is not safe. So it's a little bit intimidating and it's okay to have a, a little respect for the power tool um, but you don't want to actually enter it with fear because fear will cause you to maybe make mistakes. Uh, you'll shy away um, from it. So I've been trying to figure out a better way for my students to do this. I've reduced the router bit from a full height router bit where we take off the entire inch and three quarters at the same time to a router bit that's only an inch tall and we take off an inch and then we take off the rest of it you know, after that. And that seems to have helped and worked out some, but it's still not good enough. I was watching some videos of my friend over at uh, Texas Toast, Matt, and he uses this, this big shaper. 
uh, for doing a lot of his, and he uses pretty substantial templates on those. But I've noticed that for safety reasons, he screws in or bolts in to that, uh, to that template hand grips, push, push blocks, the same ones you would use on the jointer or the table saw. And he does that, and I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Maybe that would help my students out if I figured out a way to secure some paddles uh, to this, because just using the grip alone isn't always helpful enough. You need a more positive connection between that guitar body and the template and the router bit itself and a more positive way to grab it rather than trying to just hold on to the edges as hard as you can and making sure that you move your your hands as the bit is coming around so obviously you don't have any accidents. So this is what I did. I took some pretty standard um, T-nuts and quarter, quarter 20 T-nuts and I ground them down to be no taller than the, uh, the thickness of the acrylic, all right? And, and then I drilled a recess hole, the thickness of the, of the rim here, maybe it's a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch, and I drilled a recess hole from the back, and then I planted these from the back to the front into a five sixteenths hole that goes all the way through. And I used heat the same way that I discussed using it uh, for these drilling inserts, these hardened steel drilling inserts that I'm now using. I took my soldering iron and I just put it in the center and I waited for it to heat up enough where it started melting into the plastic and I kept the heat there until it was perfectly flush. And now I've got two T-nuts that are embedded in the acrylic from the back. It allows me to install these paddles on the front and the paddles then become removable. So when it's time to not work on the profile of the guitar, but actually work on the, the pickup cavities on the same template, all I've got to do is remove these and bring my hand router out and begin to route those. So it's really a pretty simple process. I was going to outsmart uh, Matt because I noticed that he used one screw on each and I thought, you know, if I use two screws or maybe three or four screws, that'll hold even better. But as I got going on this, I realized why he, he does what he does. And the one screw allows you to pivot these for the best possible holding position. You're still holding it against the acrylic, okay? So the foam bottom on these push blocks helps grab it, but that one screw right there kind of gives it the rigidity you need so that they don't slip off or, or come disengaged. And so I can really adjust these by just having one screw. I just had to figure out where's the optimal place and I figured out the optimal location for a one screw is in the center of the template with the screw on the paddle offset. So that way it'll swing this way and cover that area. It'll swing this way and cover this area uh, pretty securely. So that's what I've done here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually take this to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut out, I'm going to rough cut this, and then I'm going to set up the router table and we're actually going to use these paddles to do this perimeter cutout right here. All right, how's that sound? Okay, went to the bandsaw, got this all cut out. Now I'm going to have to do this a little differently than normal. I normally use one of these ultimate bits, white side ultimate bits. Uh, and it's 7 8 inch diameter by 1 inch tall and I work it from the bottom in maybe two or three passes I take the whole body. But um, that bit is not going to work because for these handles I have to switch my orientation to template up rather than template down like I normally would. So the only uh, bit that I had readily available is not my favorite. It's not a solid uh, carbide spiral bit. Um, it's basically just a, uh, a two-bladed um, double-edge bit and it does have a top bearing so I'm able to use that and it's tall enough, about two inches tall, so I can get the entire body in one pass, which I normally don't like to do, but with the extra gripping power I think I'll be okay. So Let's see what happens. It's either going to be a success and a better system like this or, or not, and I need to go out and buy a shaper uh, and be like Matt.
Well, I think we did okay. Actually, that bit was producing a lot of shavings, which is what we want. And uh, honestly, no sketchiness whatsoever. That was in one pass, which is again a lot, uh, was really smooth cutting and uh, didn't try to pull out of my hands at all. So I think having a positive grip is really the secret um, to having a successful route when you're talking about the, the full width of the body, without a doubt. I'm happy. Seriously, I think a shaper table is probably the way to go, but these handles are incredible. Uh, <clears throat> it felt so secure, and because I could pivot um, with an offset mounting point, I really had no problem getting my hands in a comfortable position, which I think is the key to getting good control. So <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with the placement of those, of those two mounting points here and here in the center. I've got a lot of range of movement for sure. So with that being done, I take the handles off and now I could start routing out this. I could swap out for the other template and put in uh, the neck pocket and the electronics cavities, get that done and then flip it over and mount this guy, which the only thing we're really gonna be doing is is drawing where the contour is going to be so that's pretty simple but like i said for other elaborate um, tremolo designs where you have a back um, <clears throat> spring cavity for that it, it, the alignment is perfect it's perfect front back no matter which order you do it in or if you do part now and take this off and then do the neck pocket and put this one back on it's perfect and that's exactly what i was hoping for is a system like that now once i'm fully done and i've got this uh, template all the template work done that i'm going to need then i can just simply take this over to the disc sander or belt sander and just lop those guys off and then i'm ready to do the round over and the forearm contours and things like that so pretty amazing how how much a little bit better gripping power does for the smoothness and the safety of the cut. So that's about it. I'm going to continue to work on this, but this is really what I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you got something out of that. Remember, safety is always the key and that no matter what you do, start with excellence.